Well, that's the finance minister, Arun Jaitley, saying he's trying his best to make sure the GST is rolled out by the 1st of April 2017. He doesn't want to hasten the process, neither does he want to delay it. Uh, important clarifications also coming in. So the draft law of the GST minus dual control and cross-empowerment has been approved. Uh, in fact, that is now going to be sent to the state legislatures once, of course, they meet again on the 3rd and 4th of January to try and arrive at a consensus on dual control. Uh, so 197 clauses in five schedules is what has been approved the legally vetted language for uh, compensation that's going to be uh, redrafted and sent to parliament so with that let's uh, go across to our experts of the day to talk about uh, gsd joining us um, live right here we've got dinesh kanabar anita rastogi from pwc as well as uh, bhavna doshi uh, from kpmg Mr. Kanabar, I'm going to come to you first. Good evening. This is Nantara. You've just heard the finance minister's press conference. He said he's going to try his best when it comes to rolling out the GST by 1st of April. Uh, are you convinced that compensation, there is complete consensus on that issue and that cross-empowerment and dual control can indeed be resolved at the next meeting on the 3rd and 4th? Well, the fact of the matter is that the primary agenda for the two-day meeting which ended today was to talk about uh, cross-empowerment and we don't seem to have reached a consensus. What I do like is the approach of the finance minister to try and close down on issues on which there is a consensus uh, and sort of roll on with rather than get stuck into those issues uh, which are where there is no resolution. But very clearly, Nayantara, at this point of time, there isn't a resolution on cross, uh, on, on cross empowerment and there isn't a resolution uh, on the sharing of revenues, two of the most critical items. So at one level, we are where we were maybe a month back. At another level, we have moved considerably ahead because the draft of the legislation has been today approved by everybody, will go to the central government and to the state governments to adopt it. But the two contentious issues remain open. In the spirit of discussion, hopefully, uh, when they meet on 3rd and 4th uh, next month, uh, they might be able to reach a consensus. But that said, the date of 1st April looks more and more improbable and we are probably looking at something like uh, either July or 1st September as being the date by which this can be rolled out. Let me bring in Anita Rastogi into this conversation. Good evening, Anita. So Dinesh Kanabar of the view that, uh, you know, perhaps you're only going to see GST as a reality in July or September. Uh, what's the sense that you're getting? And these 197 clauses that have indeed been approved, is there, you know, you as a tax expert, will they have to revisit it once perhaps uh, uh, dual control and cross-empowerment is resolved? So now coming to the reality whether 1st April uh, GST would be implemented or not, uh, I think for the last two, three times when we are hearing the finance minister, he is kind of saying that that's my, that's my target, that's how, uh, we, we would like GST to be rolled on on 1st of April. But the kind of uh, forcefulness in which he used to always talk about 1st of April is not coming out now. Also, I think uh, recently he did mention that the GST would be coming between 1st of April to um, September 17, definitely. So considering that, and now if we come to the preparedness of the government, well, I would definitely say that a lot of work has been done in these last two days. Uh, you know, to look at that particular draft law and clause by clause, section by section, read it and understand and analyze, I think that's a humongous task which has been finally done. Definitely there have been certain clauses which they have intentionally not touched, which talk about, which will actually relate to dual empowerment and IGST provisions, because that is dependent upon cross empowerment. So I would say that good work done in the last two days, laws have been approved largely uh, other than few clauses. Uh, which will be then placed before the parliament, centre and the states. Uh, 1st April, in my view, does not look a reality. I think 1st July looks more probable, considering the GST preparedness of the government. I would also like to say here is that for India at large, when we are talking about the corporates, from a corporate standpoint also, maybe this is a blessing really, because uh, from a preparedness of the companies, you know, it was a very uphill task for them to get prepared for a GST transformation when the final law itself has not been released. So I would say both from the government and from the corporate side, 1st July looks okay, 
let's not rush and run and do things which have more mistakes rather than being right uh, let's walk the path in the in, in the normal course of things focus on the uh, job but uh, let's not uh, you know unnecessarily do a lot of fast track first july looks more reasonable to me what about you what about you would your clients be a relieved lot if the first april deadline is missed and uh, gst is rolled out post that of course 16 september being the outer limit Bhavna Doshi, I was asking you, me, would your clients Anita? also be a relief? Yes, I was asking you, Bhavna. Okay. Would your clients be a relieved lot, the way yes. Anita was pointing out, if yes. uh, the GST indeed is not rolled out on the 1st of April? Uh, I, yes, see, uh, Nantara, most of the businesses, uh, because the law is not in their hand, it's very difficult for them to really... Uh, prepare for transition while the GST network, the the registrations and all have started. But it's very difficult for them to do the rest of work and therefore they will certainly be very relieved if it is 1st of July if not 1st of September because most of the businesses feel that they should have at least six months time from the day on which the final law is in their hands. So certainly they will be relieved. And it's a great step forward today since the now the clause by clause uh, reading and analysis is over, the law is approved. So as soon as we have the final in our hands and it goes to both the parliament and the state legislatures, at least we will start uh, or the businesses will start making preparations uh, that will help a lot. And this compensation issue also is on now uh, over. So that also helps. Prashant Deshpande, welcome and thanks for joining us here uh, on this conversation we're having on the GST. We just had the finance minister's briefing. Uh, 197 clauses have been approved. However, no consensus so far on uh, uh, dual control as well as cross-empowerment. Compensation has been resolved. Uh, that's going to go to the central parliament. If I could get your reactions right now. Um, you know, compensation has been dealt with. Do you think cross empowerment and dual control could be resolved at the next meeting on the third and fourth? I think we need to uh, lay our trust uh, in the uh, GST Council. Uh, they have come uh, quite a long way uh, addressing seven meetings in the space of these three months and resolving all of these issues that have been already, you know decided is a great achievement. I am sure uh, this uh, dual control cross empowerment issue that are being talked about are being discussed by them and a solution will be found out. But I think uh, it should not be a compromise solution because a compromise is a very poor substitute of uh, consensus and I think whatever solution is emerging should be durable, sustainable and uh, long lasting. Uh, Dinesh Kanabar, do you think it's time that the GST Council uh, decides on a new date for a rollout? We have been hearing that perhaps the Council has been talking of a new date, but do you think it's time that a new one is formalized? I, I don't think it lies for the GST Council really to announce a date. I think there are two limbs to the whole thing. First is to put the framework in order with the GST council is doing uh, with prodding from the finance minister, from all the uh, ministry officials. I think the key thing is for GST council to come to grips with the issues which are open out here, uh, namely dual control, uh, the, the manner of assessment, the, the sharing of revenues, etc. And once that is put to bed, two things will remain. One is the way in which the government, while it is prepared, so to say, overall, within that time frame can do the legislative work and get into the implementation mode and consider what Bhavna mentioned earlier about the industries need to be prepared once that framework is ready. I think only then can a date emerge. If the GST council were today to give a new date, it would sort of be binding itself to say that we need to do everything and more to ensure that date is achieved. And I don't think that would be the mandate of GST Council. 
No, it may not be the mandate of the GST Council, but what I was trying to get at was that by consensus arrive at when to roll it out. Anita, you brought up this entire point of how corporate India is not ready to roll out the GST. So what I was saying was that if everybody is saying 1st April is looking very difficult, you pointed out the body language of the finance ministers also seem to be indicating otherwise. Uh, would, do you think it's time that uh, formally a new date is announced? Of course, it has to be before the 16th of September, just going by that constitutional amendment bill. I think it's a very good idea that there has to be some message which should be passed on by the, you know, by the government. Let's not, uh, you know, let, uh, uh, maybe on the third and the fourth meeting they should actually say that we finally decided that we'll maybe roll it over for a quarter. That will give, a, give, I think, a sense of relief to the corporates, and I, I, I would believe also a sense of relief to the tax officials because even they are under tremendous pressure to get prepared because they are the people who are going to administer the GST law. So if that kind of a message is passed on in a concrete manner after the 3rd and the 4th January meeting, uh, you know, then I think that will be very good for the country. Uh, we are not really talking about too much of a rollback, but it's just that, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, um, essentially 1st of July. I think they should do it sometime in January. In you in, say you're saying that they might revise the date in January and announce it. it is a good they should suggestion. announce a revised date in January because let's not keep uh, everybody uh, waiting till let's say 31st of March or maybe let's say by February and say that you know what on 1st of April GST is not coming because there's just so much to be done. And, and, and Anita, do you think, uh, forget corporate India, but the states, the, uh, the centre, uh, are they all ready for it? We of course know the contracts have been given out, uh, etc. But are they ready? They're trying their best to target 1st of April as the date for readiness. But yes, as I said, that the rules, etc. need a lot of deliberations there as well. Work is undergoing, uh, but I think, uh, you know, that it will be too much of a fast track right. work, which they will also be required to do. So it's basically a win-win for both these scenarios, the corporate as well as I the government. I take your point. Bhavna, if, if I could bring you into this conversation now. Uh, you know, compensation, as you were pointing out now, is done and dusted, that there is consensus on that issue. Uh, do you think the centre is going to uh, come down and agree to the state's demands as far as threshold comes when it comes to cross-empowerment as well as uh, uh, dual control? The states have been, if I may say so, obstinate on that front. Yes, so far as dual control is concerned, it's sort of an arrangement as to how they will deal with taxpayers. So, in a sense, it could change. Something which comes today need not be necessarily what will be followed later. One would have to see by experience, go by experience, how things are working out. So therefore, perhaps, uh, as we were discussing earlier, center is also keeping that as a last point by which time uh, everything else is cleared, wherever there is consensus, it is cleared. And then this one issue remains where perhaps there will be give and take where the states today, the, the way states are asking is that certain level of assesses should be entirely within the state regime. And for the rest, there should be a division uh, based on probably a vertical divide, but that could be agreed and can be worked out somewhere where both will do a little give and take is my feeling and that is how I feel that once rest of the things are all agreed and uh, put aside, that's a last point where there will be give and take and they will be able to resolve it in the next meeting. Prashant, you know, uh, it's uh, the center, of course, wants that what it calls the vertical split, the vertical control. The states have been asking for a horizontal one. But do you think it was more important to first have resolved compensation before they went into this entire conversation of dual control and cross empowerment? I think compensation has been agreed. As finance minister said, that uh, they have spent two or three days discussing compensation. And today they seem to have uh, agreed on uh, the, uh, you know, periodicity of uh, payment of compensation, which will be every two months. Uh, he did mention that uh, one of the clauses uh, in the compensation bill is being redrafted. We don't know what that clause is, but I believe it will be relating to payment of compensation or the manner of competing compensation. Uh, so that's, I think, out, out of the way you now. Uh, real issues are, uh, he actually did mention the real issues are two, 
namely the uh, integrated goods and services tax where uh, sale in the course of imports are uh, you know in the draft model law uh, likely to be taxed under the IGST that is by the central government and the states have a reason to object there and uh, secondly also uh, the uh, issue of uh, dual control where both sides have a point uh, as uh, and they need to work out a formula which according to me should not uh, you know should not change uh, again and again uh, because uh, giving uh, the right signal uh, to the uh, stakeholders is very necessary today. Uh, but Bhavna Doshi, is there a fear, that, you know, considering the CGST and the SCGST have to be mirror images of each other, uh, is there a fear that once you have dual control as well as cross empowerment uh, sorted out, the clauses that were proved till today may need to be revisited? Is that a fear? Uh, not really, because that's only only the basic law. The principal provisions will not have to be revisited. What will have to be re revisited, if at all, is only the procedural aspect. And so that can be uh, taken up later. And it's only primarily relating to IJST where there are some issues which will have to be resolved. So the law can go ahead subject to this one aspect where it will be agreed that if, if they want to put it in the law that this particular class of assesses will be only within the control of the state or so mean control is not really the right word uh, the right word would be that they would be assessed or they would be administered by the state level authorities so really does not require a major change in law substantive provisions are very important and those have been all cleared as the finance minister mentioned. Anita, what according to you is a workable resolution? <laughs> I think I think that's a very, very difficult question you have posed. As the FM said that you know people have to come together, both the state and the center, and come to a resolution which is a win win to both of them. It should not be harming either. And also it should actually back the objective of the GST law. I think these are the three considerations which needs to be looked at and some sort of a resolution should be brought. I don't think that we have a magic answer here. Uh, it has to come after doing a lot of brainstorming and agreeing on various issues. So, but as far, so as, but whole, as, far as this whole vertical, horizontal, etc. goes, where do you stand? The key point here is that it's kind of a self-assessment and what the FM is continuously saying is that let's say if an audit has to be done for a company, who does the audit? I think that is the real key issue here. I think, uh, well, I think there is, uh, there is a lot of uh, um, uh, view which the center is giving which is not wrong and so is the state. I don't think I have a right answer as of now to give you as to what should be the best balancing position. Bhavna Doshi, we also heard the finance minister today saying that the uh, states are going to be compensated every two months. That is a decision that has been taken. Uh, do you have any views on it? Is it feasible? Uh, is it going to be very difficult to implement it? Uh, see, essentially now the entire administration will be through the GST network. So the, all the funds will go in through a common pool and from there the GST network will do the allocation and the funds would get transferred. So in that sense, because it is now electronically driven, uh, it should not be a big challenge and whatever funds have come based on uh, the program that they would have written, the amounts will be determined. Uh, the only thing states wanted was early uh, uh, compensation because they didn't want to wait for uh, the quarter, end of the quarter and then get the money. So now it will be done every two months and in any case that payment which would be made at the end of two months immediately would still be provisional and the final adjustments will happen later. So in a sense, it is good that the states will start getting compensation early on uh, and that would not impact their own welfare and other activities. Right, at this juncture, I'd like to thank my four guests for joining us live right here on ET Now with your views on how the GSD 
uh, discussions have been progressing. Uh, the consensus that we seem to have among all of you is that 1st of April looks very difficult. It's perhaps going to happen sometime in July, which is what corporate India also wants. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash etnow and don't forget to click the like button. You can also follow us on Twitter at etnowlive. To stay updated with all our programming, hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel by logging on to youtube.com slash user slash etnow.